here for the second day program of our two day national conference on science and technology for startups so yesterday it got inaugurated and uh, we had uh, startup stalls and also you had good uh, interaction with uh, different speakers i think all of you enjoyed with uh, the you know entrepreneurs young entrepreneurs who interacted with you and we are very much thankful to sri ravinarayan who interacted with those uh, young entrepreneurs it was definitely a eye opener for all of you on this occasion i thank mr madan padki for giving this idea of uh, you know inviting ravinarayan along with uh, young entrepreneurs who are from thai bangalore thank you sir uh, so i i, re I request uh, sri madan padki and also our uh, below principal dr sv dinesh to come over to the dais great ideas alone don't make a successful entrepreneur it is the bold thoughts envisioning with purpose drive and an intention to pursue or what sets them apart i feel extremely happy and i take pleasure in inviting an entrepreneur at heart mr madan padki mr madan padki is a business executive and he holds an engineering degree from nie mysuru and an mba from spj imr mumbai he has worked at wipro infosys in uh, emphasis singapore he ventured into entrepreneurship in 2000 when he co-founded meritrack and a skill assessment company he entered into manipal education to head strategy innovation and international partnership in 2011 only to transition out in 2013 following his heart and set out on his on his quest as a change maker presently He is the founder and CEO at One Bridge, managing trusty H Triple H, head held high, co-founder of Game Global Alliance for Mass Entrepreneurship, strategic advisor of Yuva UNICEF India, and president of TIE, the Indus Entrepreneurs Bangalore. True to his LinkedIn about, Madan Padki has been active in empowering youth to become mass entrepreneurs and in turn social change makers. He ventured into the untapped arena arena of rural retailing through One Bridge. The Honorable Prime Minister of Sri Narendra Modi has also appreciated One Bridge and Padki sir on his efforts to promote rural entrepreneurship on an episode in Man Ki Baat. Sir, I request you. Now I request Dr. C. P. Lohit to honor uh, the speaker of this particular session to welcome Bokke. Double. I was told that there's a large number of people in the audience. I don't hear anybody. Hi, good morning. Good morning, sir. Okay, slightly better. Shall we try it one more time? Good morning. Good morning. The ceiling is still not shaking. One last josh. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, that's better. <laughs> I. Uh, wonderful to be here uh, i was here a few years ago uh, interacting with uh, with those bad students and we had a lot of fun uh, one of the things i've realized is uh, the worst thing to happen in a first morning session is to do a death by ppt right so there's no ppt uh, there's no bashan i'll play a couple of videos just to share some ideas and i think you have to think on th hands raise your hands please okay slowly hands are coming up i think you need another dose of coffee <laughs> there is no half hand either you raise your hand full or keep it down okay okay so the guys who are raising the hands Why do you want to do a startup? Thing and they don't know. So okay. why don't we lie as in between and get these are the things which you can work upon hmm. and we can help you in that if that can be taken ahead Excellent. instead of just going on a random thing. If this is something is really needs attention, why can't we just get that on the front? Okay. That's what I work on. Super. Anybody else? Why you don't want to be an entrepreneur? Come on, there are no right or wrong answers. You're just sharing your thoughts. Who else? Ha. Huh? 
Uh, sir, I'm Uma from Minto Research. So I'm finding my happiness in this. Wonderful. So I just encourage my students to go with this uh, startups and uh, be an entrepreneur. Uh, that is what my and I here I'm here uh, to take the ideas and uh, share it to my students. Terrific. Thank you. Terrific. Excellent. Okay, one last somebody from the back. Yeah, there's somebody there. Uh, so, getting a degree, getting into a job uh, gets you only one domain experience. So, uh, being an entrepreneur, it gives you an all-rounder experience. So, you get to you experience... you find the two uh, friends who spoke, you spoke about bridging the research gap, you spoke about inspiring your audience. Did you find that both of them help others to become entrepreneurs, right? So, you are thinking entrepreneurially. So, the first point I want us to, all of us to understand is that there is a difference between entrepreneurial thinkers and being an entrepreneur, right? I argue that in this day and age, everyone, every one of you, there is no choice, you have to be entrepreneurial thinkers, right? You have to think entrepreneurially and I will explain what thinking entrepreneurially is later. Now, you have a choice of being an entrepreneur or not being an entrepreneur for a variety of reasons, right? Some say, hey, when, when I was asked when I was doing my engineering or MBA, do you want to be an entrepreneur? I didn't raise my hand because I said, listen, I have an education loan. Uh, I have to support my family. I have to earn. Once I have a few lakh rupees in the bank, I will start be thinking to be an entrepreneur. But were I, was I always an entrepreneurial thinker? Absolutely. Right? So, the first uh, thing that I want to highlight here is that in your lives, if you look at any situation, okay, let me ask another question. And this is, I want quick answers, you don't need the mic, just shout out. What are the characteristics of a, of a successful entrepreneur? What do you think? So, first of all, let's hear some names of people who you think are entrepreneurs. Right? If I were to ask any one of you, who do you think, who is your role model? Who do you think is a successful entrepreneur? What names come to your mind? Elon Musk, okay. Narayan Murthy. Ratan Tata, okay. Sorry? Ola, Bhavish Agarwal. Adani. Adani. Huh? Lauda or Gadag. I met this guy called Manjunath. Now, this guy runs a carpenter shop. Small village, 5,000 population. He is the only guy and he makes tables and chairs. Right, sofa sets, table chairs. When I was talking to him, I was asking him, so the simple one is, how do you find guy? He has one small uh, brothers, you should put one holding. He says, first of all, where is the money to advertise? And where is, who will see a holding in a village? Right, it will be the same guys. So, I was asking, how do you get customers? He says, I get 5 to 10 customers every month. I said, how? You know what he said? And that I thought was a fantastic example of entrepreneurial th thinking. What he said was, when I make a table or a chair or a sofa set for a customer, they will pay me some 300 rupees to send it to their home. I hire one tractor. He says, instead of the tractor fellow telling him to go to that house directly, I pay him another 200 rupees more. And I ask him to take the most circuitous route to get to that customer's house. So, instead of going directly, he'll go through some five villages. He says, I put my nephew on that tractor. He has a tate lota. He says, every time he goes and stops in a village, he will beat that plate. People will come. They see the sofa set which is there lying on the tractor. I put out a small uh, Xerox copy saying this uh, sofa is being made for so and so customer, cost is so much. If you need something like this, call me and there is a phone number. He says every time I deliver a product, there are 6 to 8 calls that come. And from the 6 to 8 calls, I convert at least 2 of them to be my customers. I thought what a wonderful thinking. Right? He has taken a problem and converted that to an opportunity, 
right so that's my favorite entrepreneurial story now let's go you said some names of people what do you think are the are the characteristics of a good entrepreneur right if if you know what what inspires you about a narayan murthy or ali non musk what are the things that they do that we typically don't see dedication discipline and consistency hard work vision okay what else risk taking commitment Sir, innovative promotional strategies innovative promotional strategies okay urge to solve the problem in the society okay fantastic to be able to think differently okay experience emotional stability great to solving yes. dedication discipline commitment risk taking i mean just in 2 minutes we were able to generate some 10 15 characteristics imagine if we had another half an hour we'll do a lot more now just think back do you think these are the traits required only to succeed as an entrepreneur or do you think these are all the traits required for us to succeed in life as people do you think only entrepreneurs should have these skills right that is the point i'm trying to make that these are all the traits that all of us should have you might be working in a company tomorrow you might be as you as you are you're a teacher you might face several problems now if you don't have the problem solving mentality if you don't have the courage to try five things and fail and still say i'm okay let me try something else right if you don't have the mental ability to think out of the box and say how do i find new solutions then that makes uh, somebody who has that to be much more successful than somebody who doesn't have those skills right so let me rephrase the questions how many of you want to be entrepreneurial thinkers okay we see a lot more hands going up now let me give another argument on why especially this group okay this group which is sitting here i will also urge you to start not only thinking like entrepreneurs but to start trying to be entrepreneurs okay and let me do some quick uh, status check on the state of our country with you what do you think i mean anyway the population number is growing what is what is the population of india maybe 1.4 billion okay we're supposed to be the most populous country in the world in the next 10 years or so in in all of the country if we take as of now 10 o'clock 9 o'clock how many people out of that 1.4 billion need to work for a living which means how many people are there in the working population say 18 to 65 what is the number you think 1.4 billion okay what percentage how many crores or what percentage 50% 60% okay it's roughly one third about 500 million people out of 1.140 crore people about 50 crore people need to earn a livelihood every day okay the rest are india has 400 million young people we have another 400 million old people right but the working age population is about 500 million now all of us here want jobs right we want we want and when i say a job what does what is meant by a job we need a pay, paycheck we need a salary every month apart from salary we also need health insurance uh, some social security insurance life insurance cover pension plans etc etc so in that 500 million people how many people do you think have a job how many people get a salary every month along with all the social security benefits that the job offers what percentage do you think that is 80% take a guess take a wild guess 60% 30% okay good we're getting lower and lower the number is less than 10% out of that 550 crore people 500 million people less than 5 crores have a job this includes
private sector, public sector, government, all states, central governments, armed forces, all put together, there's less than 10% of that 500 million people who get a paycheck every month. What happens to the remaining 450 million people? What are they doing? Do you think a farmer gets a paycheck every month? 250 million people are farmers. Farming families is 250 million, 25 crores of farmers. 100 million people, roughly, I'm giving you rough numbers, about 100 million people are daily wage laborers, contract laborers, who wake up, either work in farms, work as daily wage consultants, I mean, daily wage contractors, laborers, who get paid every day. Okay, and roughly another 100 million people are what we call a small business owners or employees. Okay, if I'm a small business owner running a hotel, do you think I get a paycheck every month? No, I have to earn my living, whom we call as entrepreneurs, right? So, this is one side of the story. The other side of the story is that, like you, how many, we have 500 people here, let's assume. How many people are, when you enter, when you finished your 18 years of age, you are eligible to work? Now, whether you have graduated, not graduated, PU fail, 10th standard fail, doesn't matter, you enter the workforce. How many youth like you do you think are entering the workforce on a monthly basis? Every month, how many people like you are coming into the workforce looking for a job? Rough guess. One lakh, two lakh. What do you think that number is? It's a large number. There are one million youth who enter the workforce every month in India. Which means 10 lakh people cross the age of 18 and say, I am looking for a job. India in the next 10 years is supposed to keep on adding these youth because we have a demographic dividend. We have a young population. India is the one of the youngest countries in the world, which means we will have a lot more young people joining the workforce. It is estimated that in the next 10 years, 10, 12 years, about 120 to 150 million youth will enter the workforce. Roughly take an average of 1 million a month, 10 years, 12, 120 months. Imagine 120 million youth like you all waiting and standing in a queue to get a job. How many people do you think will get a job? 10%? That's the same number of... Take even 15%. Let's say 20 million get a job. What happens to the remaining 100 million? What do you think they will do? So if you are, if any one of you here is, is a part of that 100 million who's not got a job, how do you think you will feel? Some answers. You've, you've graduated, you've studied well, you got 70%, you got distinction, but there are only so many jobs to go around. Not everybody can get a job. Sorry? Exactly. So first is you will feel let down. You will say, what is this? My friends have got a job. Your parents will be telling Right? So the challenge that we face is that how do we accommodate and where do we find jobs for 100 million young people in the next 10 years? The answer is not to set up large factories. There's only so much that large factories can create jobs. The only answer, my friends, is in that 100 million, if we can find 10 or 15 million entrepreneurs who doesn't have to set up unicorns, but can you set up small businesses that can employ 5 people, 10 people, 20 people. So if 15 million youth in the next 10 years can set up small businesses to employ 10 people each. If you do the math, we will employ 150 million people. Right? Who are the ones likely to be successful as entrepreneurs? People who have studied 
better right we all know that the higher education enrollment rate in the country is less than 30 percent is 24 25 percent which means only one out of four get to college so if you are sitting here you are amongst the elite in the country there are millions of people who have never entered school so if you guys are thinking of being a job seeker then there's no hope for the country if each of you can think saying that yes i will go on to become a job creator i will set up a small business big business it doesn't matter and i will employ five to ten people then there is hope in the world so my fear is that if all of us here thinking that i need a job who is there to create jobs there's nobody it's only us right so second argument i'm making is don't shut your mind to say no i don't want to be an entrepreneur i'm sure there are family compulsions i'm sure there are challenges but i want you to keep your minds open you never know when an opportunity will come right and when you really start thinking like an entrepreneur your whole life will change let me play your short video so a lot of people ask me so what kind of business do you think i should start of course today's topic in science and technology and science and technology will play a massive role in creating new businesses in the future we'll come to that i argue that even by being a tea seller on the roads of bangalore or mysore you have an opportunity to create jobs let's just look at one such story i want you to think about it and i want to share reflections uh, just play that charan nala kodle kida ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಸುಮಾರು ನೂರಕ್ಕೆ ಅತಿ ವೆರೈಟಿ ಟೀ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ವೆರೈಟಿ ಟೀ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರಿಂದ ಸುಮಾರು ಜನ ನಮ್ಮ ಅಂಗಡಿಗೆ ಬರ್ತಾರೆ ಈ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಇದು ವೆರೈಟಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ತುಂಬಾ ಕಷ್ಟ ಆಯ್ತು ನಮಗೆ ಟೂ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ಗೆ ಬೆಳಿಗ್ಗೆ ಎದ್ದೇಳೋದು ಫುಲ್ಡೇ ವರ್ಕ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಮನೆಗೆ ಹೋಗಿ ಮಲಗಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಟೂ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ಗೆ ಎದ್ದೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ನಾನು ಮತ್ತೆ ಒಂದು ಅಂಗಲ್ ಬಂದ್ರೆ ಫುಲ್ ಡೇ ವರ್ಕ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಇದ್ದೇ ಇರಲ್ಲ ಮಧ್ಯಾಹ್ನ ಹೊತ್ತು ಕೂಡ ನಾನು ನಮ್ಮ ಬೈಕು ನಮ್ಮ ತಮ್ಮ ನಾವೇ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದೀವಿ ಅವಾಗ ಜನ ಬಂದಾಗ ಲೆಮನ್ ಟೀ ಕೊಡಿ ಜಿಂಜರ್ ಟೀ ಕೊಡಿ ಮಸಾಲ ಟೀ ಕೊಡಿ ಅವಾಗ ನಮ್ಗೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಟೆನ್ಶನ್ ಆಯ್ತು ಏನಪ್ಪ ವೆರೈಟಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ವಿ ನೋಡ್ರಿ ಎಲ್ಲಾ ಬಂದು ಆ ವೆರೈಟಿ ಕೇಳ್ತಾರಲ್ಲ ತುಂಬಾ ಕಷ್ಟ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ಆದ್ರೆ ಜನ ಬರೋದ್ ಹೇಳುದ್ ನಮ್ಗೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಖುಷಿ ಆಯ್ತು ನಾವು ಕಷ್ಟ ಪಟ್ಟರು ಕೂಡ ಇವ್ರಿಗೆಲ್ಲ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಡ್ಬೇಕು ಒಂದ್ ವೆರೈಟಿ ಇಷ್ಟು ಜನ ಇಡ್ಲಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಹುಡ್ಕೊಂಡ್ ಬರ್ತಾರೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಟೀ ಕುಡಿಯಕ್ ಅಂತ ಆ ಹುಡುಗರೆಲ್ಲ ಬಂದ ಮೇಲೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಈಸಿ ಆಯ್ತು ಇನ್ನೇನೇ ಲೇಬರ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಅವಾಗ ಅವಾಗ ಸಡನ್ ಆಗಿ ಕೆಲಸ ಬಿಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗ್ತಾರೆ ಆ ಟೈಮಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವೇ ಹೇಳ್ಕೊಂಡು ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ಬಿಡ್ತೀವಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕೆಲಸ ಯಾವ್ದು ಹಿಂದೆ ಮುಂದೆ ನೋಡಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ನಾವು ಅಲ್ಲಿಂದಾನೆ ಬಂದಿದೀವಿ ಮತ್ತೆ ನಾವು ಹೋಗಿ ಮಾಡಕ್ ಏನಿದೆ ಆದ್ರಿಂದ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಯಾವ್ದು ತೊಂದರೆ ಬರಲ್ಲ ನಾವ್ ಎಷ್ಟು ಕಷ್ಟ ಪಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅಷ್ಟಕ್ಕೂ ಫಲ ಸಿಗುತ್ತೆ ನಾವ್ ಎಷ್ಟು ಕಷ್ಟ ಪಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅಷ್ಟು ಹೆಸರು ಬರುತ್ತೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ನಾವ್ ಕಷ್ಟ ಪಡಿದ್ರೆ ಯಾವ್ದು ನಮ್ಗೆ ಈಸಿ ಆಗಿ ಯಾವ್ದು ಸಿಗಲ್ಲ ಅನ್ನೋ ಒಂದು ಮನ್ಸಲ್ಲಿ ನನಗೆ ಒಂದು ಇದು ಇತ್ತು ಅದನ್ನ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡೆ ನಾನು ಅಷ್ಟು ಕೂಡ ಕಷ್ಟ ಪಟ್ಟೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ಎಷ್ಟು ಕಷ್ಟ ಪಡ್ತೋ ಅಷ್ಟು ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಒಂದು ಹೆಸರು ಬಂತ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಶಾರನ್ ಟೀ ಅಂದ್ರೆನೆ ಈಗ ವೆರೈಟಿ ಟೀ ವೆರೈಟಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೀ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರಲ್ಲಿ ಶಾರನ್ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಹೆಸರು ಹೆಸರು ಬಂತ ನನ್ಗೆ ಅದು ಒಂದು ತುಂಬಾ ಖುಷಿ ಆಯ್ತು ಮತ್ತೆ ಅವಾಗ ಕಷ್ಟ ಪಟ್ಟೆ ಇವಾಗ ಸುಖವಾಗಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಆರಾಮಾಗಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ ಜನ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದಾರೆ ನಾಲ್ಕು ಔಟ್ಲೆಟ್ ಇದೆ ನಾಲ್ಕು ಔಟ್ಲೆಟ್ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ ಜನ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಒಂದೊಂದು ಔಟ್ಲೆಟ್ ಹತ್ತು ಲಕ್ಷ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಕೂಡ ನಲ್ವತ್ತು ಲಕ್ಷ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಪ್ರಾಫಿಟ್ ಇದೆ ಈಗ ನೋಡಿದ್ರೆ ನನ್ನ ಒಬ್ಬನಿಂದ ಸುಮಾರು ನಮ್ಮ ಇಡೀ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿನೇ ಬದುಕ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅದೊಂದಿಲ್ಲ ನನ್ನ ಇಡೀ ಒಬ್ಬನಿಂದಾನೆ ಎಷ್ಟು ಜನ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತು ಜನ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಇಷ್ಟು ಜನಕ್ಕೆ ನಾನು ಒಬ್ಬ ಕಷ್ಟ ಪಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಕ್ಕೆ ಇಷ್ಟು ಜನಕ್ಕೆ ಒಂದು ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದವಾಗಿದೆ ಡ್ಯಾನಿಯಲ್ ರವರು ಸಿಗರೇಟು ಮಾರಾಟ ಮಾಡುವುದನ್ನು ನಿಲ್ಲಿಸಲು ದಿಟ್ಟ ಹೆಜ್ಜೆಯನ್ನು ಇಟ್ಟರು ಅವರು ಹಗಲು ರಾತ್ರಿ ಶ್ರಮಿಸಿ ತಮ್ಮ ವ್ಯವಹಾರವನ್ನು ಸಣ್ಣ ತಳ್ಳುವ ಗಾಡಿಯಿಂದ ಐದು ವಿಸ್ತಾರವಾದ ಶಾಖೆಗಳನ್ನು ಪ್ರಮುಖ ಸ್ಥಳಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ನಿರ್ಮಿಸಿದ್ದಾರೆ ವಾಟ್ ಸ್ಟು
So instead of just the plain old tea, he started doing green tea, lemon tea, that tea, this tea, and he started becoming more famous, more customers started coming. Then slowly he, he says, I wake up at 2.45 a.m. in the morning and work through the day. He started generating enough profits to open the first outlet, second outlet. Today, if you go to Indranagar in Bangalore and go to Sharon Tea Stall, you have to stand in a queue to get his tea. And the beauty thing he says is, each outlet he is able to earn 10 lakhs per annum. So he is 5 lakhs, his net profit annually is 50 lakh rupees. Can you imagine, a, do you imagine the amount of hard work we have to do to earn 50 lakhs in salaries? Right? His profit is 50 lakhs. And he says the thing I am proud about the most is that because of me, 20 other families are supported. Across these outlets, he's employed 20 people. Right? And the other beautiful thing that he said was, many of us who smoke here, we first go to a smoke joint, buy a smoke and then buy tea. Right? He took a call several years ago that I'm not going to sell cigarettes because I don't want to harm my customers. So he took a principled stand and said, I'm going to sell only tea. Apparently a lot of people told him, no, your tea business will close because people come only for cigarettes. If you stop, people won't come. He says, no, I believe in my tea. I think that my varieties of tea are good enough, people will come and they came. So there are lots of lessons in this story and I can assure you, that there is a Daniel in every street. If you go around Tumkur town, you will find hundreds of stories like Daniel. Because there are people who are like this, except that we think only Narayan Murthy, nothing wrong about that. But in our minds, we think only an Elon Musk or a Jeff Bezos or a Bill Gates is an entrepreneur. Of course, they are entrepreneurs. But we rarely re tend to recognize these heroes as entrepreneurs. Right? So, and I argue exactly. So he's also hired school dropouts, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to uh, create jobs, right? So coming back to the previous argument, we need about 10 to 15 million Daniels to come up in this country in the next 10 years. Of course, not selling tea, but people like him with that mentality that I'm willing to work hard, I'm willing to take risks, but I will build my own business, I'll build my brand. Right? We think brand is only built by the Unilevers and the PNGs, or the, look at the brand he's built. Right? So, what I wanted to share with this was, tomorrow you might be setting up a cat cam business. You could be setting up, maybe who knows, in five years we'll see drones flying all over the place for agriculture. 3D printing is going to become a huge opportunity, right? Metaverses, blockchain, crypto, NFTs. The future is unfolding at a very fast pace. If you start building up businesses around that, not just 20 people, if you play it straight, you will employ 2,000 people, 20,000 people. And that's the dream that we should have here, right? The last thing I want to say is, in Daniel's story, what hit me is two parts. One, you can see he loves his job. He loves tea, but more importantly, in conversations with him, he says, I love talking to customers. When people come and drink a cup of tea with me, I see their smile on their faces, I feel very happy. Secondly, he takes a lot of pride in saying, because of me, 20 families are being supported. So when I asked him, what is the purpose? of your life. He says, my purpose is to make sure that none of my employees go hungry. I want all of my 20 families to succeed. I want their sons and daughters to get educated. I want their sons and daughters to go on to become entrepreneurs. So the other thing I want you to reflect on and you said it beautifully to start with. Each of us have to find what gives us happiness. Okay, and if you align your happiness and purpose to your life work, then it will be joyful. Right? So just like how uh, Daniel found purpose by saying that, yes, I, I feel purposeful when I make my customers happy and I feel purposeful when I support 20 other people to enjoy their lives, that is his purpose. 
So the assignment I have for you, the thinking that I want you to do over the next few days is, take a piece of paper, just think what gives you the most joy. What is the purpose of your life? It's a very heavy question. You won't find the answer in one day, but start thinking about it. I found my purpose almost after 15 years. I didn't know what I was doing. I was running a successful business. I sold my company to Manipal. But 10 years ago, I really sat hard and asked, what do I really want to see? And I said a smile on a face of a youth who's found a, found a job or become an entrepreneur is something that moves me. And the last 10 years, I've done nothing but that. Right? Each of you have a passion, a purpose. Right? And I'm using these two words slightly interchangeably. Uh, I, met, I met a girl who said, I'm very passionate about plants. I love plants. She says, I have a small balcony. I have 10 plants. If I just go sit next to the plants, you know, I can just not even count the hours. I can just sit there for hours together. I feel very peaceful. Do you think she can build up a career around plants? She had an idea. She says, I want to help people set up balcony gardens. Right? Even if you have a 20 square foot balcony, I want to create the most beautiful garden. Do you think she'll succeed if she starts doing that? She will. Because she's got a passion. She's found the purpose to say, like how I find my calmness and peace when I sit with plants. I want to help other people find peace in their lives. And I will set up balcony gardens. I'm 100% sure she'll succeed. Right? So think about what, what brings you joy. It could be dogs. It could be some pets. It could be children. I could really see that she's very passionate about teaching. Right? If you can start aligning what you're passionate about and finding the purpose of that in others' lives and start building something that will help people connect to your passion and purpose, that's a big formula for success. Right? So, with this, I, I just want to summarize three parts that we've covered so far. All of you have to think entrepreneurially. There's no choice. Second, whether you like it or not, you have a responsibility towards the nation to start behaving like entrepreneurs. I'm not saying immediately out of college you start. Can you start a business in the next five years? Can you start a business in the next 10 years? Be open to that fact. Right? My dream is this group of people, if I meet 10 years later, can this audience in this hall, could we have created 100,000 jobs? It is possible. Absolutely possible. Right? And the last thing I want to share is that connect your purpose and passion and lastly believe in yourself. Self-belief is the most important thing that you can ever have. How many of you have watched this movie called Kung Fu Panda? Lovely. So those who are raising your hands, go watch it again. Those who have not raised the hands, please watch the movie. Okay, and I have seen evidences. I run a foundation called Head Held High Foundation where we take zero educated, illiterate village youth, kids who have never been to school, never held a pencil in their lives. In six months, we transform them so that they can stand here in front of an audience like this, speak in English and deliver a lecture. That's the confidence. Right? And I can tell you with 100% guarantee that each of you have unlimited potential in yourselves. If you can start believing like how the panda eventually believes that yes, I can be a Kung Fu warrior and he does go on to be a Kung Fu warrior, all of you here are Kung Fu warriors. Except that a lot of us don't believe that we are the warriors that we have to be. Right? So, if you can operate with that belief that anything is possible, nothing is impossible, and you have all the strengths to make it happen, the world will be a far, far better place. Right? So, do I have it? Can I hear a loud yes to say, will you all start behaving with self-confidence and thinking like entrepreneurs? not shaking yet. Once more. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, let me quickly, we have another 10-15 minutes. 
uh, I want to do a quick exercise now. Okay. Simple tools to help you start thinking entrepreneurially. What is a startup thinking? Right. Okay. Before that, I want to give you another example. When you go outside your campus, you'll see a lot of small businesses. Fruit shops, vegetable shops. Daniel's itself was a business. What do you think is the diff We hear these terms entrepreneur and businessman. Right? People say I'm a businessman. Some people say I'm an entrepreneur. What do you think is the difference between a businessman and an entrepreneur? Okay. Both gives jobs to others. So a businessman also create jobs. Entrepreneur also create jobs. Yes, ma'am. Uh, can I get the mic? Uh, sir, I understand uh, business uh, focuses on making money and uh, uh, earning a living day to day. Right. While an entrepreneur thinks what more I can give, what better I can give, how impactful I can be what in what I'm doing and how it can influence the society and people associated with me. And I think that is a main difference between a business and an entrepreneur. Lovely. I think the question paper has leaked. You have prepared. <laughs> Wonderful. So let me explain this. You said it beautifully. Let me explain it in a slightly different way. A businessman, if I have 100 rupees in my pocket, a businessman tries to earn 110 rupees, 120 rupees, 130 rupees. Right? So you're trying to maximize the return of what you have. And I'm not saying that is bad. That's a great trait. If you can generate 200 rupees from 100 rupees, that's a phenomenal businessman. But an entrepreneur does not think about 100 rupees he or she has in a pocket. She looks at the future and says, boss, there are million opportunities. Right? And you work backwards from that opportunity to figure out how much money do I require today to, to generate that million opportunities or to capture that million opportunities. Right? So you don't start with this is only the money I have, I have to maximize it. You look far and say, what is the change? What is the difference I can make? And how do I then bring that change to happen? And if for that, if, if I need 100 rupees, great. If I need 1000 rupees, I will go talk to friends, families and raise that money. Debt, equity, whatever, right? So the difference in, so I argue that all entrepreneurs have to be businessmen. You have to spend your money carefully and earn, but not all businessmen are entrepreneurs. Right? Sharon T. Stall could have still been a businessman on a tea shop. He could have earned 5,000, 10,000, 20,000. But he looked at it and said, what if I start serving 300 varieties of tea? He thought big and look where he is today. Right? So the thing that I want to say is start thinking like entrepreneurs, not just like businessmen. Okay, and let me give you a few examples of how to think like an entrepreneur. So very simple examples. It will take the next five, ten minutes. So supposing I were to meet any one of you outside in uh, near your gate and ask you, hey, how do I get to Bangalore airport? What would your response be? What do you, what do you think is your response? Quick. You can take a cab. What else? Google Maps, are you a fool? You don't know how Google Maps work, right? Everybody is on Google Maps. What else? City bus. How do I get to Bangalore airport? Take a city bus, they'll give me steps. First take a city bus, then go there, then, right? Cab. Oh, great. She's taken one step ahead of the customer. So she said, I'll drop you. You pay me. Good, you're thinking like an entrepreneur. <laughs> okay. So just reflect what happened here. I asked you a question. You gave me an answer. Unfortunately, that's how our education system has trained us to be. Whatever is the question, first you have to give answer. Okay. There was nothing wrong in the answers. These are all valid answers. But did anybody of you here question the question? 
Did you ask, did any, any thought cross to ask me, why do you want to go to Bangalore airport? Right? Now, if you ask me why, supposing you ask me why do you want to go to Bangalore airport? No, I'll come to that. Okay? That's where entrepreneurial thinking makes a difference. She asked, is it your concern? I don't care. You do, you go die whatever you want. <laughs> right? But if you had asked me the question, why do you want to go to the airport? There could have been many answers. Let's say one answer was, oh, my uncle has had a heart attack. He's in the car. I have to take him to the hospital. Somebody has told me that the hospital in Mumbai is the best hospital. So I have to take a Bangalore, go to take a flight to Mumbai and go. Would your answer be different? You would have said, why are you going that far? We have a great medical college here. Right? Why don't you take your uncle there? The answer would not have been getting me to Bangalore airport. Right? If I had told you, and, and assume that you genuinely wanted to help me, listen, why do you want to go to Bangalore airport? Oh, I just robbed the bank next door. And I have taken some five crores and it's in my car. And I want to take it out to Dubai. Assuming that you had to help me, what would your answer be? You will give me, again assuming that you want to help me and I will share some money with you. You will have told me, don't go by the main road, lot of police checks are there, take this road, stay there, go in the night. Right? You would have given me a different answer. So the simple exercise that I want to prove that here is, one of the most successful things that every entrepreneurial thinker, every startup does is to question and keep asking the questions till you arrive at the problem statement. My problem was not getting to the airport. My problem was to achieve a purpose. It could be saving my uncle. It could be securing the money that I have. Right? Or it could be anything else. If, if, if I had rolled down the window and it was Bill Gates asking, how do I get to the Bangalore airport? I would have done exactly what she said. Forget telling you, I will come with you. And I'll drop you. Right? So, the first thing that entrepreneurs and all of us make a mistake is by assuming whatever we think, whatever we know as problem statements are the problem statements. Not necessarily the case. Right? If you are not solving for the right problem, you don't have a solution. So one challenge that I will throw at you is anytime you encounter a problem, before you jump to answers, start understanding the problem better. That's one common thing that every entrepreneur does. Okay. Secondly, what about it? Sure. 100%. Okay. What else can it be? Huh? What else can it be? Paperweight. It can be used as a container. It can be used as a weapon. Hey, you're not paying attention to me. What else can it be? Fast. Scale. Right? You can you can create advertisement space. If I am short and I want to increase my height, can I tie this to my feet? Right? So this, again, is a very simple example, but I want to highlight a thing. That many of us look at a solution. Water bottle is a solution. And say, this is the solution. And there is nothing else to it. One of the biggest challenges I've seen in entrepreneurs is you create something, a product, a technology, app or something and say, oh, this is the solution. This is the only way it can be. What good entrepreneurs and startups do is to explore all possibilities of a solution set and then arrive at the final solution. So a water bottle is just not a water bottle. It can be a water bottle. Right? And the other thing that I've seen is we fall in love with our solution. Oh, I think it's a water bottle. If somebody says, no, you can use it to increase your right, hey, what a fool, yeah. this is a water bottle. So the second learning that I have seen in a very simplistic way is, 
focus on the problem first and look at a range of solutions there is nothing called as the solution there is only a solution ok there could be hundreds of solutions our job in life and entrepreneurs is to explore all possible solutions and then arrive at the best solution that meets the problem that, the, that solves the problem that the customer is facing right is it clear so how many times just catch yourself in a day when somebody asks you hey what should I do you will give one solution right and in your mind you are thinking that is the only solution right I want to go to a movie this afternoon oh yeah you have to bunk class bunking class is not the only solution maybe you can go and convince your teacher to play the movie in your class only right that's a solution your problem is you have to watch the movie right it's not the only solution that's what I want you to think about lastly which is where the third common mistake I've seen in entrepreneurial thinking if I were to come to you and ask you how much is this bottle of water 10 rupees how much is this bottle of water 10 give it to me for 9 no how much is this bottle of water huh? 10 rupees any other number huh? 4 rupees excellent what else I am asking for I want to buy this bottle of water how much is this bottle of water excellent so she says depends on your need so let me rephrase this question let's say I am in the Thar desert and I come and ask you how much is this bottle of water thousand rupees hundred rupees it doesn't matter if I am thirsty and I am dying okay what is this bottle worth to me so I am trying to make a difference there is a difference between the price and the value many times we confuse value with price if I am going to die and this bottle of water is my only savior this is equivalent to all the earnings of my life right if, if, if you were to say this is a lack of rupees and I think hey one lakh of rupees I can earn in one year my life is more important do you think I will pay a lakh of rupees I might right so the third lesson and this is a life lesson is that don't confuse the price to be the value always focus on what is the value that the customer is willing to pay for this is also true not just in entrepreneurial ventures a job I see same kind of resumes coming everywhere right obviously you're all final year students you will say the same thing if I'm a recruiter right how will I how will I recruit I get hundred resumes I want to recruit 10 people how will I recruit those 10 how will I find those 10 if I can't see any differentiating value I will go by price hey I am willing to offer you 10,000 somebody comes and says no sir I am willing to work for 8,000 rupees salary then I will say okay you go you come I will give you an example and this really happened I was in some college in Madhya Pradesh uh, in Indor I remember many years ago and this was an MBA college and in a session like this they were all crying that nobody comes to my college for campus placement right uh, we don't get offers so I asked a question which is your favorite company so somebody said ICICI bank I said okay let's do some example imagine if you are the recruitment head of ICICI bank how many college brochures might you be getting there are 5000 BA MBA colleges in the country if I am the recruitment and I know because we have done recruitment for ICICI in my previous company the recruitment head will get 4000 brochures please come to my college for placements 
can I go to 4,000 campuses? I will choose to go to 100. Right? I will reject 3,900. I will go to the top 100. Now, who defines what the top 100 is? Various rankings. I am Ahmedabad, Bangalore, whatever. So, the question I asked that gang was, how will you make sure that your resume, that your college brochure stands out in that 100? That is the value you have to show. This was 2014 when ATMs were just about coming. So, they said, we don't know. I said, let's do an experiment. There are, let's assume that they were at some point of time, 15 ATMs of ICICI Bank in Indore. And there were some 15 ATMs of HDFC Bank. So, the idea that we came out was, send 15 people, stand in front of an ICICI Bank ATM for one week. Survey every customer who's come to the ICICI Bank ATM, ask them what did you like, what did you not like, etc. And do the same thing for two, three competing banks, HDFC, CD Bank, Access Bank, whatever. You guys get together, generate a report on comparative comparison of ICICI Bank ATM's customer experience and HDFC Bank customer experience and send it to the CEO of ICICI Bank. I said, if I am any good as a CEO, I will say these kids and these youth have done something different. They have tried to create value for me. They have tried to create a value for me to understand what is happening in the market. I never asked them to do it. Right? And I will then give that report to my recruitment and say, hey, see this college students, they have done something interesting. So it so turned out that these students did the same thing and four months later ICICI Bank was on their campus. Okay, so the point I'm trying to make is each of you in your life have to differentiate yourselves. Each of your ventures have to be differentiated. The customer has to see value. The customer in this case was ICICI Bank in that example I gave. Right? If you do the same thing you will not get any different results. So the three startup thinking lessons I've learned very clearly is focus insanely on the customer problem. Right? And in this case, I'm applying it to life. The customer could be your, your parents, your father. I'm sure you, you'll have daily conversations at home. I used to have crazy conversations with my mother. Till one day, I really sat down with her and understood why are you shouting at me like this? What's your underlying problem? And then I discovered that the problem was something very different from what I had envisaged, which I found an easy fix. Right? So find out your customer problem. Figure out various types of solutions that you can try, experiment, try it out. Never lock on to thinking this is the only solution. And lastly, create value, a differentiated value. Right? Simple truths. 99% of the startups I've seen failing fail because they, they did not do one of these three things properly. Right? And of course, there are other things like teamwork, etc., etc. So, the, in a nutshell, what I want to end with is saying, listen, the largest ent entrepreneurial venture you can build is your own life. Imagine that if your life was an enterprise by itself. Right? So, how do you lead your life as an entrepreneur? And if you start leading your life as an entrepreneur, you will extend that entrepreneurial thinking to your job, then you will create a business, then you will make your employees entrepreneurs, your employees will go on to create more enterprises. That is the beautiful cycle that we need. Right? And I think the fact that you are all here on a Thursday morning, sitting, spending one hour, shows that you have already taken the first, first step. Right? And first step is half the battle won. So, what I want you to commit yourself is in the next several years, keep thinking entrepreneurially and keep exploring possibilities. Keep trying new things. You'll find your differentiated value and in that process, you'll find your purpose. Right? Happy to take any questions. <laughs> any questions, thoughts on your mind? It's the right opportunity to get your doubts clarified. Don't hesitate to ask questions. Yes. Uh, see, their 
Rao. We have Ramesh before, Ramesh after, and Ramesh awards. Can we look into the journey of Ramesh? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me end with that. Thank you for asking. Half a mind I had to play those videos. Maybe it'll be it'll be super inspiring for me to end with those videos. Okay. Whom we work so with? One of the kids is a person called Ramesh. This is ten years ago. Ramesh comes from a village called Koti Gudda in Raichur, which is 60 kilometers from Raichur. Many of us don't have even heard of Raichur. This is back of the beyond of Raichur. When we started our NGO, we said we want to take youth who have never held a pencil in their lives, who have never seen a, a train. We said if somebody has seen a train, they are not as backward as they have to be. And our challenge was can we teach them English, math, computer skills, etc. So we went around several villages asking for village to say, give me your most uh, illiterate villager and we will transform that person to a BPO worker. Many villages we were thrown out, one of the two villages tried to file a case because they thought uh, we are kidney harvesters. They thought, oh, you will take away our most illiterate youth, snatch their kidneys and send them back. Right? That was the going, maybe that was an entrepreneurial venture then. Right? So Ramesh was one of them and he comes from a family of 10. They live on an unarable three acre land. Their monthly income for the family is 3000 rupees for the full family. Right? Uh, when we got Ramesh into the training program, uh, it took us some two hours to get him in front of a video camera. He had never seen a video camera before. So if you can just. <laughs> Okay, you can stop it. So, you met his home, he says, are you crazy? How can I teach kids like this English? They don't even know Kannada. Right? And the guy ran away. He said, I'm not going to come to madman like you. You do whatever you want. So, two of my friends who came from a transformational uh, leadership process started applying those same transformation principles. What we realized was, it was not English, but Ramesh's whole confidence was low. When we asked him to do something, he said, I don't know. I'll not do Right? So we started putting the whole confidence building approach. I was traveling like crazy during those times. And uh, five, six months later, I came back to meet them. And what I saw changed my life. Because if you play, I, mean, I never traveled on the horse. I did not know what the time and what the watch. I knew only two things go perform or sunrise, came back home or sunset. I had never visited a city. I did not know about city life. When I first came to Bangalore, I could not speak to anyone and I also scared to touch our computer. When I started to learn in English, I was so scared because I did not know how to write every city. After the 7 months, I can type minimum of 40 words per minute. A month ago, I went to my village for my brother's wedding. My mother told me, please sir, come and have a seat. She did not recognize me. She asked, who are you? I told her, I am Ramesh your son. Has she didn't believe. Then I showed my ID card on which earlier photo was there. She looked at the photo for a while and asked. And after every moment she cried with the tears of happiness. I never can forget that experience. Very Thank neat. you. I have seen them transform like this. So what I have come to believe is that there is unlimited potential in everybody. Right? It only requires effort and that belief. In fact, I call it not training because when you train and you forget, you will come back. But a Ramesh, after he undergoes this process, can never become Ramesh before again. It's a irreversible process. In fact, uh, four years later, uh, we won the CNN IBM Real Heroes Award at a national level. And you could see oh, Ramesh. I had never thought award. of getting out of my, my village. Today, I am on national TV. I am very happy to be here with all of you. Four years ago, I didn't know how to write my name in any language. Today, I am working in a BPO company as a team leader. My dream is to get a, give an opportunity to all the villagers. So like he did a job, went back to the village, he didn't know what to do. And slowly he started going to schools, colleges, talking about his story and saying that if I can become like this, look who we are. Today he is the most sought after motivational speaker in North Karnataka. He says that he has touched over 6 lakh youth and given lectures and workshops to 6 lakh uh, youth in North Karnataka and they pay him something, some thousand rupees to that and he earns about 20-30 thousand rupees a month. But he has gone to where his passion is. 
he has gone to where his heart is right and he is able to then say that I am finding a lot of joy right look at the transformation interestingly and this is something that uh, we are going to do again in a few weeks I was presenting this to the Honorable uh, Prime Minister in some event he said all our IS officers must know of this and last year we were invited to the Lal Badu Shastri Academy of Administration in Missouri training academy for IS officers 650 IS officers I, I took two other people uh, Ramesh Tandana and Megraj and they conducted a one-day workshop for them on for the IS officers on how you should develop youth of the country and at the end of that day they got a standing ovation and Chandana Ramesh were told sir by them they said sir you know in our lives we were supposed to say sir to IS officers now the IS officers are telling me sir and madam that is the transformation that is possible so I just want to end saying that guys a lot of us die without knowing what treasures lie within and I am telling you for sure there is a treasure in each and every one of you live your life to the fullest potential and happy to work with the college with any one of you in any form to unleash that potential uh, happy to be of any support but be sure. Madan Badaki sir thank you so much for your insightful talk it was really a nice session you have finally an amazing Ramesh and and I would like to recall your word or a statement that is we should always be ready to connect our purpose with passion. Thank you so much. To first of all get his time itself in addition to the motivational speeches that he delivers he does multiple things as an entrepreneur he keeps spinning off multiple ventures and uh, in addition to that social causes that you see which he goes out with his passion and heartfulness to help anybody who wants to achieve, who wants to do well in their life. I have seen him personally for many years as a you know very close uh, common friend. Through him I have seen him and you all, whenever he calls him and says we want to do something for the students community, the first person says Hanbalagan let's do. This is not the first time in this particular place he comes and does this. I think five years back he has done one session which was very, very well accepted by the you know local students here. Kon Banega Udyogpati. So and he created one activity on that and with that activity, I tell you one thing what has happened is, sir I think I, I will share this, uh, you know. that activity we invited couple of alumni entrepreneurs the alumni entrepreneurs are also there to judge the best presentation, business presentation. One of the students in this made a presentation about a possibility of one restaurant on the, I think, uh, Tumkur to Bangalore Highway. How to transform that particular restaurant. And one of the alumni who is a student of SIT, successful entrepreneur, picked it up when you drive from here have you ever seen this Nama, what is that Namaskara Bangalore what is that restaurant on the left hand side <laughs> Namaste Bangalore Namaste Bangalore is a concept he picked it up during the Kon Banega Kuroorpati presentation and he started this he is a basically an automobile you know auto component manufacturer very successful auto component manufacturer an SIT student but one of the student presented how a restaurant should be and there is a lack of restaurant when you drive from Tumkur to Bangalore and thereby the first restaurant came now I think three to four restaurants have already come when you drive from Tumkur to Bangalore and that's the concept actually how things spans out we really don't know today's ignition whatever he tries to do we really don't know down the line some of you would come out with something completely different and transform the entire landscape that we are thinking about I think that is what Madan is very passionate about it colleges college after college in fact one day we went to his place he was like dabbling with Uman entrepreneurship program and the place in which we saw myself and uh, you know 
our uh, Lohit, it was like bubbling with activity, young kids like you with multiple things doing and trying to make a presentation. He was there in that. So he danced multiple things. Thanks, Madan sir, for coming all the way and uh, you know speaking to us and spending our time, valuable time actually. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Dear Shankar, uh, IIS officer, retired IIS officer, former chief secretary for government of Karnataka, and also our uh, respected chairman of our TBI board, Siddhanga TBI. So, on behalf of SIT and also on behalf of our TBI, we welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I request Mr. M. N. Vidya Shankar, former chief secretary to the government of Karnataka. Indeed, it's a red letter. It's a red letter day in our lives. And we are really fortunate enough to have Mr. M. N. Vidyashankar with us. Mr. M. N. Vidyashankar is an IAS officer from 1982 batch. He completed his education in Delhi from schooling to post-graduation. He has a Master in Economics and MPhil from University of Delhi. He has also obtained a post-graduate degree in Business Administration from the very reputed Harvard University, USA. He worked previously as a chairman of BWSSB from 2000 to 2004, step from 2008 to 30th June 2009. And he also worked as a principal secretary, Department of Information, of Information Technology, Biotechnology and Science and Technology, uh, Government of Karnataka till 9th July 2012. He has also served as principal and additional chief secretary to the government, Com Commerce and Industries Department, Government of Karnataka. He served as a director of Karnataka Power Transmission Company Limited. Mr. Vidya Shankar has also served as a non-executive director of Mysore Paper Mills Limited. Furthermore, he has served as a director of the Karnataka Asset Management Company Private Limited. Sir, I request you to enthrall the session through your expertise. Thank you. Siddhanga Institute of Technology for giving me an opportunity. Uh, to be a part of this very important event, number one. And number two, it's also a part of learning exercise for me. So what I'll do is I will Please not have me making a, a similar feature. Any idea? Sorry? Okay. Bitcoin is the world's biggest bank with no cash. Can you imagine a bank without cash? Uber, the world's largest taxi company, it owns no vehicles. It is operating in close to about 37 plus countries without a single vehicle. Facebook, I'm sure each one of you is a part of it. The world's most popular media owner creates no content because you create the content. Alibaba, the world's most valuable retail, is a Chinese company. It has absolutely no inventory, like your Amazon, like your Swiggy, and like your Zomatos. Then you have Airbnb. You know what Airbnb is? What does it stand for? It's a, it's a US-based company, started in 2008. Yes. Airbnb stands for accommodation provider, provider in the world without a single real estate. Okay, that's a peculiarity. All these companies are big in their respective spheres. They are working, but they own nothing. Proceed. And that's the beauty of entrepreneurship. Now, since we are talking about, you know, how is technology helping? Look at the way technology is helping you and me, each one of us. Now, an airplane took 68 years to have the first 50 million users, five zero. Okay, you come down and you look at Pokemon. Pokemon took 19 days, one nine, to achieve 50 million, 50 million users. And what about Facebook? What about Instagram? What about YouTube? One they newspaper, one, one media coverage or whatever. But I'm, since there's a paucity of time, I'm just giving you about six to seven examples. Now, we have reached a point where you can be any, you can have a, you can, Interact with anybody that you want, anytime, anywhere, any device. It should not be only a laptop, it should not only be a handheld device, it could be anything. That's the way in which technology is now helping us. Now, this company, Dozi, is, uh, the founder is Gaurav Pachani. Uh, it's a contactless remote health monitoring company that tracks heart health, respiration, sleep quality, stress levels with 98% accuracy. 
Okay, all the, I'm going to discuss only about Indian companies. Now, this company has already deployed its solutions in 300 hospitals in the country in 40 different districts. See, that's the kind of development which is having. So, in fact, you know, uh, as Mr. Madan Patki was speaking uh, a short while ago, in this country we don't want employees, we want employers, we don't want job seekers, we want job creators. L look at that, as an Indian company create with 98% accuracy in the medical field. Trinetra, Chandishekar and Sham Vas I'm Sham Vasudra, I'm sure many of you know him. They have come out with a portable ice cream device. Imagine sitting in this room, you can do it, which can find out the cataract, the diabetic retina, the glaucoma, the cornea issues. Even this has been deployed in more than 70 hospitals in the country. It's just a small handheld device. It does not require dilation of pupils. Normally when you go to an ophthalmic surgeon or an ophthalmic hospital, they dilate your pupils, isn't it? They take about, you know, 45 minutes time for them to examine the condition of your eye. Here, no such dilation is required. And it does it in 5 minutes. Uh, this is a very good, uh, you know, again, it's called Violet Easy, uh, done by Sumit, co-founder and CEO, technology-led parking. The beauty of this is, of this device is, it helps you to know, suppose you are going to Bangalore or you are in Tumkur, you want to know where is the parking place available, because parking place is a very big issue uh, in this part of the country. Now, where is the parking space available? Where is the next EV charging station if you are in an electric vehicle? Okay, all this information is available. And what has been the kind of coverage you have done uh, with an EV, with an electric vehicle? It gives you everything that you require as a commuter, as a driver. Parking place, charging stations, petrol stations. Suppose I want to go to another point from point A to point B, what is the distance? Is there any fuel station in between? All the information is available on Wallet Easy. Again, Agatsa is a, it's a, it's a great device that has been done by this husband and wife combination. It's the world's smallest ECG, electrocardiogram, world's smallest ECG, device which works only by touch. Okay, you touch it, it gives you all the readings. You don't have to go to a clinic, diagnostic lab, you don't have to go to a doctor. Now, it is only a chain sized remote monitoring system. Now, this has got a very important international award very recently. It's called uh, Graham Bell Award. You know, one often asks, is failure necessary if you want to become a good entrepreneur? I would say you have to be a successful failure. Okay, normally you may find it to be two opposites. You have to be a successful failure. See, Thomas Edison, who I'm sure all of you know that he came out with that incandescent bulb. He failed 98 times. He could not come out with the kind of incandescent bulb that he wanted. So one media person asked him, you have failed 99 times, why are you still attempting it? Why don't you stop it? You know, Edison's reply was, I have not failed 99 times. I know 99 times how it does not work. See, so that's the beauty of, you know, the spirit that he came out with. So similarly, uh, the world's smallest ECG chain size, it can just go by touch. <laughs> Finance will soon be entirely phones with no banks, no off, no, you don't have to go to a bank, you don't have to go to an ATM. We are reaching a stage where entire financial transactions that you have can be controlled only through your mobile phone. It's already happening in many places. A lot of banks are already closing down, not in this country, but in other countries, closing down ATMs also. Uh, EVIVA, it's a Hyderabad based Blue Semi, name of the company is Blue Semi, Sunil Madhikatla. Within 60 seconds, that means within one minute, okay, you get your blood glucose, ECG, heart rate, BP, uh, SpO2, which is oxygen. Now, uh, I don't know if you are aware of uh, every year uh, in San Diego, there's a very important event called CES. Consumer Electronics Exhibition, which ha happens in the first week of January every year. This was displayed in the Las Vegas uh, CES. Uh, UV Health, uh, Ms. Mehik Malik, this concerns only women's health. 
Now, breaking taboo around women's health, diagnosis, consultation, holistic life management, women's health concerns on PCOS and PCOD. Okay, uh, basically uh, ovarian syndrome and ovarian disease is what this does. Again, you know, all these devices are something which have been deployed extensively, not on a pilot basis. Now, the only thing is they need to scale it up to the entire country. So, I, as I said, because of positive time, I'm only cover, going to cover only about six or seven of them. And this is again a very major, uh, you know, uh, breakthrough in women's health where they are trying to find out uh, certain things where a woman may feel a slit, slightly apprehensive going to a diagnostic lab or to a doctor. Uh, Nirami, this is beautiful. You know, without any physical touch, you are in a position to, to check up breast cancer and without, uh, without, as I said, absolutely no touch is required. There is no radiation. Okay, so uh, breast cancer screening product. Again, it's become very popular across the country. And all these are devices which have been developed within the country and within the state. Okay, now, if technology has done so many things, what you and I are more concerned with is how does technology help the future of work and the future of jobs? How does the future of employment look like because of the kind of technology that we have? See, when we talk of impact of technology on jobs, I think we have to be very clear. There's something called blue-collar job, there's something called white-collar jobs. So when it comes to a blue-collar job, you can rest assured there are three levels. One is low skill, one is middle-level skill, and one is high-level skill. All the jobs in the mid-level skill because of AI and robotics will get completely obliterated. Will get complete, they'll vanish from the job scene altogether. So we will not have any jobs in the middle level. Okay, so it will be either at the low level skill or at the high level skill insofar as blue collar jobs are concerned. Jobs will survive only if they cannot be done by AI and a robo. Okay. Uh, in Japan, in Singapore, in South Korea, they have almost withdrawn, you know, security guards. It's all done by robots. Okay? Uh, of course, it's not a recent phenomenon. It has been going on for quite some time. But wherever you have a very, very advanced development of AI and robots, the middle-level jobs have been completely eliminated. As I said, repetitive jobs, especially in the textile sector, especially in the automobile sector, none of these jobs will exist five years down the line, ten years down the line, if we adopt AI and robotics in a very big way. Now, it benefits only those who engage in intellectual capital. So when I say intellectual capital, a researcher, a script writer, a creative thinker, a magician, Okay, these are the only jobs which will survive because these faculties are not shared either by AI or by a robo. So, it will benefit only that category of people who indulge in intellectual capital. Okay, now my time limit assigned to me was 20 minutes, so I'll be very happy in case there are any questions, please do let me know. That's normally the concept that we have at the family level, at the peer level. But I think we need to get away with that kind of uh, mindset. Uh, just to share one more thought with you. Late 90s when survey was done, how many engineering graduates become entrepreneurs? It was in the late 90s. You will not believe it. In fact, I was taken aback when I saw this report. Late 90s. 2018, it came down to 8%. It's not good for the country if only 8% of the engineering graduates become entrepreneurs. And, of course, the counter-argument that I was confronted with was that 8% of 2018 is much more than 28% in the late 90s. See, that's not the argument that we are looking forward to. We want physically more and more of entrepreneurs coming. Because if you are producing more engineers in the country, we also need more entrepreneurs. Okay, we need more of entrepreneurs from who are doctors. We want doctor entrepreneurs, we want engineer entrepreneurs. And today you take it from me, there is no time better than today to become an entrepreneur. The entire ecosystem of entrepreneurship is loaded with things which we require to become, Failure, a, successful to become a successful entrepreneur. Failure 
just cannot be avoided in the days in the weeks in the you know in the in the career of a person in the life of a person you have to fail in case you have to become an entrepreneur okay so the more for the country thank you very advances in technologies so the whatever the instances you showed us so these instances are taking away the employment right employment opportunities so now years i think uh, more people uh, will be under uh, un uh, under un unemployment so i think uh, we need to uh, make uh, more population to be skilled with uh, any one of the things which cannot be done under ai and robotics uh what kind of uh, uh, the skill training has to be given uh, uh, so that the ones who work under these aspects like for instance uh, the so successful ones and everyone can't invent uh, the same things right so what kind of uh, skills has to be uh, introduced into uh, people trade union went on strike saying that we should not have computerization in the banks and today what is the scenario every bank advertises fully computerized bank am i right they say fully computerized bank so what's happening computers have actually increased the job market they have increased the kind of that we have you have more and people if you look at the number of jobs and number of banks or jobs per bank in the late 80s and early 90s and look at what it is a condition today every bank because of computerization is creating more jobs okay now that's the case going to be the case with ai and robotics also so ai and robotics does not mean that jobs are going to be killed the only thing is the skill sets required for these two interventions will be slightly different from the normal skill sets that we are developing and you take it from me there are lots and lots of organizations which are trying to impart Almost 10 times that those so mn vidya shankar thank you so much that take our uh, next session i request uh, professor girish to introduce our uh, uh, shiv shankar mr b shiv shankar sir to come up on the stage sir to to introduce mr b shiv shankar b innovator he is graduated from ms or sas bangalore he did his post graduation from conventry university united kingdom so he has got an experience in global companies like rolls royce general electrics pratt and whitney utc avio gtre isro dusan quest global in design solution business operations and engineering and management of large business centers in information technology sector he has a wide range of experience of quest and a different leadership he is proficient in developing and streamlining systems and process with proven ability to enhance operational effectiveness to meet business goals within cost time and quality parameters his core skills are known to be as leadership revenue growth business development communication program management financial management strategic management and he has got strong analytical skills and many others sir i kindly request you to address all of us with your expertise